This week, Congresswoman Nancy Mace of South Carolina, she made some major news in a House Oversight Committee that held hearings on violent online rhetoric. And whether or not it is a threat to democracy, I want you to watch what may be one of the greatest moments I've ever seen in an oversight hearing involving Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Watch. I have a question, is it yes or no? Do you believe your rhetoric is a threat to democracy when you're calling to a cost a branch of government, the Supreme Court. I don't believe that's a correct uh, characterization of my tweeted, statements. Though. Did you not tweet that? It was absolutely brilliant. There's a whole bunch of it. I urge you, Google this and watch the whole thing. It was masterful. And that's likely just a preview of things to come in January when the new Congress begins. Please welcome to the show from the First District of South Carolina, Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Thank you. Great having you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love your courage, your boldness, but the clarity with which you just, I mean, brought their own words to them. They walked right into the trap. <laughs> they really I don't, did. I don't know how you show up to Congress, you know, saying that you're speaking out against hate speech, speaking out against violent rhetoric, and then you come to Congress and we show you all of your hate speech and all your violent rhetoric that you use online. They're just a bunch of hypocrites. It's you crazy. put it right up there in their face, their own tweets yep. on this big poster board. Right. And you read their own words to them. Verbatim, and said, verbatim, yeah. Could you see in their faces their panic? You could see the jaws drop in the room. I mean, literally, I need context. What context do you need? I'm yeah. literally reading your words in black and white. It's I blew it up on a poster board so everybody could see it, and they needed context, and I was mischaracterizing their words. I'm like, no, you literally tweeted this. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it stays on the Internet forever, guys. You know, I think one of the things that makes this pretty poignant is that this is not abstract. You've had threats against mm -hmm. you because of this kind of nonsense. Yeah. For these people to put this nasty stuff out, yeah. uh, inciting violence, saying that you should never be able to go out in public. I mean, that's what they were saying. Yeah. As a result of that, I heard you say you have to carry a firearm everywhere you go. I do. I carry either my Sig Sauer P365 or my Ruger LCP2. I have seven firearms, <laughs> but... Uh, Good for you. Those are two of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, those are two of my favorite to carry, but I do because of the threats that, that I get. And I've, I've had my car keyed. I had my house spray painted uh, two summers ago. And then last summer, at the end of summer in August, someone trespassed into my home for the second time. Inside your yes, house? Yes, into my home uh, for the second time in a year. Were they and arrested? No, they would just, no, they, they were not arrested. Um, all the evidence was there, but I was in the process of moving out. And so, you know, it just wasn't really worth it. I know, you know, I've been doxxed by my local media. I've been doxxed on social media. And the divisive rhetoric, I see it on both sides, the far right and the far left, it kind of has that. But when you get these threats, I live looking over my shoulder. And yeah. I'm a single mom, I have two teenagers, and they have fear too sometimes. And so that's, that's why I carry. I mean, a lot of members of Congress, they can afford private security. I am my private security. Yeah. I am, I protect myself and my family. Which is exactly why all of us need to have the Second Amendment and yeah. respect the reason that we have it to protect ourselves and our yeah, families. Absolutely. And I love your personal story. Yeah. I think it's one of the greatest in all of Congress. You dropped out of high school. Yeah. Your mom said, okay, fine. You're going to drop out. You're going to go to work. You went to work at my favorite place, <laughs> my happy place. You worked at Waffle House. Yeah, had I, had I, I known that. I love me some Waffle House. <laughs> had I known that, I would have worn Waffle House yellow tonight. <laughs> had I known that, it is my, it is, it's, I got my start there. I dropped yeah. out of school at 17 and my parents said, my dad's a retired army general and my mom's a retired school teacher. And they said, if you're gonna stop going to school, well, then you got to start going to work. And I learned some very tough lessons during some tough times. I did learn how to smother cover in chunk <laughs> hash browns. Um, but, uh, you know, I used to stand on a piece of duct tape in the uniform with the apron and the hair bonnet and yell to the cooks in the back how my customers wanted their hash browns. And that's how it all started. But then you did something pretty remarkable. You yeah. became the first woman to graduate from what had been the all-male Citadel. Yeah. And you didn't just graduate, but you graduated magna cum laude. I think that's a yeah. pretty big yeah. deal. Yeah. So you go from high school dropout, Waffle House server, to becoming a member of Congress along the way. We say Waffle House to the U.S. House. I that's love that. <laughs> that's how that works. You may have been better off if you'd have stayed at <laughs> Waffle House, you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little crazy right now up there. But yours is a great American story of mm. people overcoming challenges. 
Did you think when you were serving those hash browns at Waffle House that one day you'd say, by golly, I'm going to be a member of Congress? Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be a member of Congress. Why um, did you want to be? Well, I, I've seen, I was in business for a while when I graduated from college. I'm a single working mom. I've got two teenage kids and I see what's going on. Yeah. And I wanted to bring that personal, that business mindset to Congress. I wanted to run, you know, the government like a business rather than a bureaucracy, change things, right? Be that that change, sort of change agent. Um, it's a mess right now. And yeah. the federal government, state and local too, they get away with things that you and I in private business could never get away from. There's no accountability. And we have these hearings and the hearing was great. I love calling out hypocrites, okay? Yeah. That was awesome. But where's the accountability? What happens when they leave the hearings? There's usually never any accountability. And I want to see that, especially when Republicans are in the majority next year. There's new management in town, right? We need to hold people accountable, hold their feet to the fire. We need you to be a chairman of yeah. one of the big committees. Yeah. And to do the magic that you did in that committee, we need you to do that at Congress when they get back in power. Because I think a lot of people have high hopes that this Republican class mm -hmm. will not be like the ones in the, in the past. I hope and pray. I hope and pray. We all do. Yeah. It's going to be a mess if, if there's not some real action. Yeah. How confident are you that we're going to see some things take place that will hold people's feet to the fire? I think you will. And, and being on oversight, I'll have a gavel on the oversight committee with Jamie Comer and what Jim Jordan's going to do on judiciary, the investigations that we're going to have. They're going to be substantive. It's not yeah. going to be just for headlines. And even the majority leader, Kevin, uh, minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, he's talked about the spending issues that we have right now and trying to get that under control. And I know I've made a promise that I'm not voting for a budget or a spending bill or a continuing resolution or an omnibus if you're not going to cut government spending. If you're not going to balance the budget, I'm not voting Good for, for it. Good for you. I mean, that that's what we have to do. Yes. And as Republicans, is be the standard bearer. And that should be the standard. The government literally shut businesses down in the middle of COVID. They had to make tough decisions. They had to fire employees. Um, they had to cut spending. And yet the federal government kept collecting record revenue year over year. And they just they kept on spending money we don't have. And that's been a Republican problem and a Democrat problem. I don't blame the other side. We are, we're our side's at fault too. They're responsible for raising taxes. They've been responsible for deficit spending, and we're going to stop that. That is great news, and we're going to be uh, keeping an eye. Please come back, because I love having you. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a long time. I, I find your story inspirational Thank and, uh, frankly, reaffirming that America is a great place for opportunity when people work hard, and yeah. you are living proof of it. What an honor to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you so much, and God bless you. Thank God you. Bless God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Now, I think our audience is going to want to keep up with Nancy Mace online. You can do that. All you got to do is head over to Huckabee.tv. We have all the links to the Congresswoman. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope you will now. The button is just below this video, and there's a little bell next to it. If you click on those, YouTube will reluctantly start letting you know when we've got a new video uploaded.